Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Dave Bitter, front-end developer at Frontman, and today I have another Friday tip for you. We're going to have a short look at the Payment Request API, which is an API that you can use to uh, get billing information from a user. So it's not uh, an API to actually pay in an e-commerce website, but it's more of a, a replacement for a checkout form, uh, which is built in the browser. So let's have a quick look at the documentation on MDN. Well, as you can see, this is built for creating a fast purchase experience and uh, to mitigate a huge drop off uh, during checkout. It also focuses on consistency throughout different browsers, accessibility, credential management, uh, and consistent error handling. So, if we have a look, we have uh, a few interfaces to work with uh, that we can use, as well as some dictionaries. Uh, and these have strings in them for, for instance, errors uh, that you might uh, run into. And this is one of the examples of the consistency. So you can always use the same uh, strings uh, throughout different browsers. If we scroll down a bit, we can see that uh, at the time of making this video, it's fairly well supported. Chrome and all the Chromium browsers uh, support it, uh, as well as Safari and Samsung Internet. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Firefox doesn't yet, uh, so we'd have to come up with a, a fallback for requesting uh, this information. So we'll first need to create an array with uh, some configuration uh, of the methods the user can pay with. So let's create a variable called methods configuration. And the basic configuration of this is uh, an array with an object that has a key of supported methods, a basic card for this example. Uh, and a data key where we can supply which networks uh, we accept, for instance, Visa and MasterCard, uh, as well as uh, the supported types of payments that we support, so debit and credit. Next, we want to supply uh, the shopping cart information. So let's create another variable called shopping cart items, for instance. Uh, and this is an object where we pass an ID of the order itself, uh, as well as uh, the items that we purchased. So here we have an example item of one US dollar. Uh, and in the end, we supply the total and we can also give a label and an amount. So all what's left is to uh, actually create a, a payment request, create a variable called request. And we say new payment request. And we pass the previously made variables in there. So we have our methods, configuration, as well as our shopping cart items. All we need to do now is to actually show the UI for the payment request. We do this by calling show on request. And there we have it. So what you can see here is that we have the order summary uh, that we supplied with the shopping cart items. Uh, you can go into detail to all the items uh, as well as the payment uh, information. So this is a mock uh, credit card that I use for the sake of this demo, of course. Um, but if you click this, you can select uh, whatever credit card you like to pay with. Um, so next, if we hit pay, uh, we need to uh, input uh, our mock security code and then you see it's processing so at the moment it's doing nothing because we didn't code it in there yet uh, but this is where you actually hook into your uh, own api i'll comment out the show for now because it's gonna keep popping up the ui um, but show is a promise so we can call then and here we get the payment request info and for now let's just console.log that payment request info 
Uh, and we, of course, need to turn show back on. So if we hit pay now, put in our mock security code, uh, you can see that we have a payment response here. And in this payment response, we have uh, the details of the user uh, for the card that they use. So for instance, the card number, security code, the user itself, uh, expiry month, expiry year, those type of things. Uh, and for the billing address, we get uh, the information that we need. So from here, you would most likely hook it up to your existing system uh, where you pass this information. Uh, and as soon as it's done, uh, you want to continue because as you can see right now on the screen, it keeps on processing because we're not calling complete on it. So let's do that. If we have this payment request info and we call complete with a string of success, it should handle the payment request. So we're gonna turn show back on say pay put in our mock security code and you see immediately it says okay that's fine normally it would take a bit longer of course because you're most likely going to call an api somewhere and then there's the final step so if we have a successful completion uh, we can call then again on this and as soon as that happens uh, you might want to do what you normally do so go to a successful checkout page uh, or uh, redirect them back to the homepage, whatever you normally do. And that's all for today. So I think this is a great addition uh, and you can use it already in your current application. Uh, you can use the current way you have it as a fallback uh, and use this to offer a seamless uh, user experience uh, for your users and to maybe even decrease the drop off during the checkout process. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.